few weeks ago, our nation was struck by a mass shooting in Las Vegas, Nevada. Over 50 people were killed in this horrific tragedy. Just a week later, and on a different scale, my girlfriend's father was working in Naples, Florida, following Hurricane Irma. While there, two men attacked him, one holding a gun to his face and the other holding a gun to the side of his head. Thankfully, after taking everything that he had of value, they fled the scene, leaving him physically unharmed. There is no doubt our nation needs to address the issue of gun violence. Unfortunately, we live in a violent society and guns are often used to commit violence. Gun violence is a big issue today and it is important to understand the value or the issue so that we can make changes to decrease the number of injuries and deaths related to gun violence. Reducing gun violence is not about making decisions based on high profile mass shootings but requires individual cities and towns to evaluate gun-related incidents within their communities to determine a research-based remedy. As someone who owns guns for sport, specifically hunting and target shooting, I also know guns are dangerous. By the end of my speech, I hope you will understand the needed diagnosis and treatment to reduce gun violence. First, I will discuss current research and data on gun violence. Second, I will discuss why the focus should be on state and local need and finally, I will discuss research-based remedies to treat the issue of gun violence. The more guns, the more gun violence. There is a direct correlation between the number of guns and the number of gun-related incidents. According to research complied by Daniel Webster, when compared to other developed countries, the U.S. has more private guns per capita and higher household gun ownership. Because the U.S. has more guns as a country, we will have more gun violence. High gun states have more gun homicides than low gun states. Alaska is the third highest state in the gun ownership and has, highest, and has the highest rate of gun fatalities. Most of the states on the top 10 list for gun ownership also made the top 10 states with the highest gun violence. The number of gun related incidents grows each year. According to Gun Violence Archive, an organization that provides verified data and research, the number of gun-related incidents, injuries, and deaths has slightly but steadily increased each year since 2014. There are more than 10,000 deaths each year from gun violence. This number does not include those injured by gun violence. The number of deaths from high-profile mass shootings is only a small percent of the total number of gun-related homicides. And as you can see here, there's only 39 deaths from mass shootings while there's 1,300 or the 13,500 deaths from gun violence in, like overall. The number of deaths from, from high-profile mass shootings is only a small percent of the total number of related homicides, although it should be noted that the number of mass shootings has increased slightly over the last three years, as you can see by this model here. There is a direct correlation between gun ownership and gun violence, but there is no correlation between gun laws and gun violence. Gun control activists often pick and choose data to support their side of the issue, since you can find the support for either side. Chicago has very strict gun laws and very high gun violence. Massachusetts has very strict gun laws and very low gun violence. While Louisiana has very lax gun laws and very high gun violence, Vermont has very lax gun laws and very low gun violence. Instead of looking at these mass shooting situations, states, cities, and towns need to look at their particular data related to violent crimes, including firearm-related arrests. Once states identify cities and towns with higher firearm-related arrests, data for these specific areas can be targeted. Then decisions should be made using evidence-based literature on interventions that have been proven successful in similar situations. Interventions to reduce gun violence have been studied, reviewed, and proven to work. Problem-oriented policing has been proven effective. Specifically, policing high crime areas has shown to reduce crime and, and disorder. This is similar to hotspot policing, which has been also studied, which has also been studied and reviewed. Problem-oriented policing targets specific areas where data shows high crime, where data shows high, high violent crimes occur. Arrest data, such as time of day crime, is committed, and emergency room data help police forces to determine problem-oriented areas. Studies by Coper in 2016 and Bynum in 2014 support this intervention in reducing gun violence. 
The practice of proactive arrest has also been has also proven to, re to reduce crime. In policing for crime prevention, Sherman states, the higher the arrest rate for higher risk offenders and offenses, the lower the rates of serious violent crime. A study conducted in 2012 by Wells and others suggests that focused police work to seize illegally possessed firearms from the streets and arrest those in illegal possession of firearms will impact offenses committed with firearms. By being proactive instead of reactive, gun violence can be reduced. Today I first discussed the data related to gun violence. Second, I discussed focusing on gun violence as a local issue instead of a national issue, as laws and ownership may vary from state to state. Finally, I discussed interventions that have been proven effective in decreasing incidents with gun violence. Reducing gun violence is not about making decisions based on high-profile mass shooting but requires individual cities and towns to evaluate gun-related incidents within their communities to determine research-based remedies. In conclusion, the issue of gun violence is a disease. It needs a proper diagnosis and treatment, one that has been proven effective. Thank you.